Have you ever wondered how photographer Trey Radcliffe is so successful at so many things? Well, in this episode of Twip Talks, you're going to find out how. Hey, folks, here we go again with my good friend, Mr. Trey Radcliffe. Trey's on the hangout with us from Middle Earth down in New Zealand. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Trey, always without fail, has his fingers in a number of different pots and projects and, you know, and and. For some reason, one of like one of Trey's digits is is comes from King Midas. So whenever he touches stuff, <laughs> it turns to gold. So we're going to talk about that whole Kickstarter peak design thing you're involved in. that made like, you know, a couple dollars. And we're going to talk about something new, which is the Plotograph thing, uh, which I, I actually met those folks. They're doing some crazy work over there and yeah, Plotograph plus Trey's work ridiculous and then we're going to talk about the arcanum i want to get an update on the arcanum and where that stuff is going you started the arcanum a couple years ago and revolutionized kind of and kind of rethought the way people were looking at education with a kind of mentor mentor mentory kind of feel to it and now let's get a touch base on it has it been successful or is it time to go back to the drawing board so trey radcliffe welcome to the show man how you doing Thank you. I take a little umbrage in saying I have a Midas touch. Not everything I do works out. Believe me, I've got, you know, I, I don't, I make mistakes in pretty much every industry around the world. But uh, sometimes things work out. You know, you can't, you can't give up. There's, you know, Winston Churchill has so many great quotes. And uh, one of them is, success is the ability to go from one failure to the next with no loss of enthusiasm. So that's just kind of that. what we, that's, that's what I try. Believe me, a lot of stuff falls apart and doesn't work, but some stuff does. Yeah, but, but people yeah. only see, people only see the part of the iceberg that's above the waterline. Like all the failures that are below the waterline, inconsequential. It's only what's above. And, but, you know, if you contrast it, looking at your above the waterline stuff, it's kind of impressive. Dude. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, we're going to talk about one of those. Like, look at the peak design thing. You may have gone through like several different projects before you finally decided to work with peak design and help them design the, the everyday messenger bag that launched last year. But when you did, like, let's just recap, because we did an interview back then. They wanted, what was it, 100K on that Kickstarter? And it ended up what, right. at a million five or something ridiculous like that? What was it? I would. It was a million five in a few days, but then it ended at 4.9 million. <laughs> See, 4.9 million on a $100,000 ask, right? I mean, like, yeah, it's crazy. Look, I give them all the credit in the world. I, um, I had come out of Africa uh, and I hated my camera bag and I called those guys up because they already had, you know, a few successful Kickstarters, right? We didn't want to do our own Kickstarter. I think it's really smart to partner with people that know, you know, what the hell they're doing. Right. So mm -hmm. we, they know what they're doing. They really understand. And they're great designers. So it was a it was a beautiful collaboration. And um, it was actually we'll talk about the new Kickstarter that's going on right now in just a minute. Yeah. But yeah. I will tell you a story about that first one that was a little scary. OK, one thing that Peak Design does that's quite different is they start building the product during the Kickstarter because they want to deliver it as fast as possible. A few months after the Kickstarter ends, most Kickstarters don't most yeah. collect the money. And then like 10 days after the Kickstarter closes, they finally get the money into their account and then they start building the, the idea. That's mm -hmm. not the way it is with these guys. And so, you know, we were 50-50 partners on it and it required us to put in a lot of money, right? So even before the Kickstarter went off, um, I had to send in a quarter million dollars and I got, I got home. I said, honey, we got to send a quarter million dollars to Vietnam. <laughs> she was like, what? What the fuck? I was like, listen, baby, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> so I just, so anyway, I, just I just started hearing I started hearing two live crew music in my head for some reason. We love you long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume you get a lot of long time love with that much money. But anyway, uh, it was scary because I had never done a bag. I had never done a Kickstarter. And I, I was um, there's a lot of exposure, right? The financial exposure. Like what if people didn't like the bag? What if no one bought it? And, you know, so it was very, very risky. Um, and anyway, that turned out to be such a success. I, um, it was great. And that's why we kind of went back to the well to try it again. And this time we're actually doing not one bag, but 
four camera bags. Yeah, and they're awesome. I'll, I got them up on the screen here. We'll uh, we'll put them in the video as well. But uh, I'm looking at this. So they've got the tote, the sling. What what else is in there? There's like what what are the three the four bags? It's four, right? Four total it's bags. Four. It's it, it's the tote for the ladies in the house and men who need a tote. The yeah. sling, which is a very lightweight bag, uh, when you go out for just a very light carry, and then two backpacks a 20 liter backpack and a 30 liter backpack. And those are by far, we're looking at uh, poles and everything. Those are by far the most popular ones. Yeah, that's the, that's on my list. I need, I need the backpack, you know, and it, and for me, I was talking to the peak design people a couple of weeks ago and you know, I was looking at these bags. They had prototypes of them on the table there. And I was like, which, which is the right one for me? And I, it came down to there's no right one. It depends. The answer is it depends on what you're doing. Like I'll take the messenger for certain situations and the backpack for, for right. certain situations. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'm a tote guy, but even that right. sling, I would probably ring, bring the sling for like just, you know, quick yeah. out and about things. I just want to throw a mirrorless camera in there and a, and a lens and, and be off in a, in a way. Right. Absolutely. And that's kind of the weird realization that I've come to kind of begrudgingly is that I thought, oh, you know what, if we really put our heads into it, we can build like the ultimate bag. And there really is no ultimate bag. It depends on the situation. So you have to have a, a couple bags in your arsenal and then just have this sort of, uh, you know, the situational if then that you go through. And I think a lot of people are, there's not that many days left in the Kickstarter. And I think a lot of people are waiting to the end because they can't decide which one to get. And I think what's going to happen is the same realization that I came to is you get two backs. Like I got, yeah. I got the smaller backpack and uh, the sling bag. And actually, I, I'm in the middle of packing them right now because those are the two things I'm taking to Burning Man. So I'll have like my, my big carry when I go out to shoot for three or four hours and I need all my stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have my little mini carry when I just go out for half an hour or an hour just to do some, um, just some messing around with my camera. And, I, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting p part of that because when... I came to that realization as well, or there's no one perfect bag. You got to have a couple bags and then you switch your, your accoutrement depending on what the, the mission of the day is. But then it becomes a hassle moving stuff from bag to bag. So what I started doing was having different pieces or, or collections of kit in separate bags that go in those bags. So I'll have a little, if I know that I'm going to interview Trey Radcliffe at the airport, I'll have an audio bag that has everything I need to record an uh, interview in it. And I'll throw that in the bag. If I know that I'm doing, you know, landscape photography or whatever, I'll have certain, you know, a certain bag with that kind of stuff in it. So you, yeah. you, then I can move, I'm portable. I can move from bag to bag and it's like, it's not like, okay, I got to go into every nook and cranny of this bag to find the stuff and move it. Right. Right. Yeah, it is. It's always a changing workflow because your equipment's always changing also, yeah. especially with you doing all your audio visual stuff. And uh, yeah. I, yeah. I kind of have a habit now when I get back from a shoot, I have a table, an empty table with like bags on it. I get pretty much everything out of my bags and just leave them on the table. And then before I go out again, I spend like, you know, a minute just repacking a bag and going out. And it's because it's it. nice to see everything on the table because you forget what's in your bag. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you put on some uh, some A team music theme music in the background <laughs> when you pack your bag? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> You know it. I play a lot of 80s tunes in the background. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this Kickstarter. So the everyday. So the current Kickstarter, um, I have the page up now still. And you mentioned that there's not that much time left. There's 20 days left to go in this Kickstarter campaign. As we record this, what day is this? This is uh, August 19th, 2016. This thing already has 13,379 backers and the total pledged. This time they went for $500,000 as the ask instead of that 100, but it's already up to $3.1 million, $3.1 million with still 20 days to go before the end of this thing. Like, how does that even happen? Is this, a, this is another record breaking Kickstarter campaign, right? Um, yeah, I really want to thank all the backers and the people that uh, believe in us. You know, we had so many people come out to the, our photo walks last year when we were showing off the bag. And, and it's really neat to walk around and see people carrying the bag and people walk up and we give each other hugs. And it's a beautiful community. It's been great. And, uh, you know, we're, we're shocked as always. Uh, we always go into this with a lot of humility. We don't really know if it's going to work or not. And um, it's just been phenomenal. I think... Um, one of the things that uh, surprises me most is um, the level of feedback. If you go into the comments area, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments and everyone's answering each other's questions. Uh, we yeah. do a lot of hangouts. Um, it's just a, it's a great team. I love those guys. 
You say you say hundreds and hundreds of comments. I'm looking at it right now. It's at two thousand six hundred and twenty eight comments in there right now <laughs> <laughs> on this product. Yeah, I, I, yeah. this is I mean, this is, it, it's it's a little bit active and it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the end of this 20 days. So uh, before we leave this part, this particular topic. So these three bags that, that I'm looking at here. So the, the backpack, the tote and the sling, no changes to the messenger or has the messenger changed at all? Um, there is, there has been an update to the messenger, although it's not part of this Kickstarter. Um, I think they made the laptop area in the back a little bit bigger because it was a little okay. snug when you would try to put in a MacBook pro and, and an iPad, it got a little snug in there. So that's, that's been loosened up a little bit. And there's been a few changes to the zippers and a few minor things that most people wouldn't even notice. But then they all, if you, if folks didn't know, they, they started with the 15 inch version and they also released the 13 inch, the smaller version, which is the one I typically carry around most of the time. So, That's right. Yeah, and it yeah, uh, fits my 13 inch MacBook and, and the iPad pro perfectly right in there. Yeah. It's a, it's a great bag. It really is. I'm very, not everything I do, I'm that proud of, but, um, and once again, they, they did everything, you know, I'm just kind of along for the ride and gave a few minor suggestions, but just happy to yeah, be associated you're, you're with being, you're designer. being humble, but you know, looking, looking at the original launch video, you gave a lot of input on this, right? So you, from what, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it looked like you said, okay, what would be the ideal bag for me if I could, if I could create a bag that I wasn't making any compromises on, what would that bag look like? And then you found the peak design people who said, yeah, we could make that. <laughs> <laughs> and then now we are, here we are at 3.1 million, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a great collaboration. Um, their head designer, Art Viger, man, that guy is unbelievable. How the, the amount of care and detail that we went through, we went to Vietnam together to, you know, go to the factory and pick out the materials and this sort of thing. And of course, they build bags for many different people. That's what it's a bag making factory. And yeah. they, all the owners that were there working with us, they have never seen the attention to detail that Peak Design brought, like really looking at the materials, being very careful with each zipper selection and the way the materials move together. Um, normally, people just send them like a, like a cocktail napkin. I say, put a bunch of pockets in there. Uh, mm -hmm. So they, it's, um, it's quite a unique experience. Well, and, and here we are in, the, in year two of this. And the, the, the interesting thing about it, and I don't want to spend too much more time on this bag, but the interesting thing for me, and it's fascinating from a marketing perspective, is there there are lots of camera bag manufacturers out there you know that make really really good bags mm. but they must have been scratching their heads or or kicking themselves when this when this campaign launched it, even this current campaign that a relative new kid on the block because at the time last year when peak design launched the everyday messenger they hadn't done that was their first camera bag so they jumped into the market like this <laughs> and, and basically said, oh yeah, we're, we're here at the party and uh, we're going to own it. Right. Well, so, it's, uh, it's been tremendous. Currently, this is the number one Kickstarter. This is the number one best selling bag ever on Kickstarter. And it's just been incredible. I think, uh, you know, th so much changes with the world, you know, this, with the yeah. internet and social media and all this jazz. But I think one reason this is really successful is because of the backers and the community. Like you said, there's over 2,000 comments in there. And, you know, we're actively listening to that feedback. And we're, we're literally all building this together, right? It's like a community project. And, <clears throat> and then, you know, their, their uh, uh, incentive to get in early is you get it cheaper, right? It's much cheaper than it's mm -hmm. going to be at retail. You're going to get it first. Um, and you're just part of this amazing community. And it's fun. It's fun to build this stuff together. Um, rather than just, you know, some uh, someone else designing a bag and deciding what other people want. We all design this thing together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So I'm looking at the launch date. They're saying that estimated delivery is December 2016. I need you to pull a string or two, Trey, because I'm heading to Vietnam in November of 2016. Right. And I need I need to take one of these bags with me, the backpack. So pull a string and, uh, you know, tell okay. them. I actually up. hatched a plan to get you one, but I, I, next week I was going to, because I, they were going to send me the latest prototype and I was going to use it and I was going to fly to San Francisco for Burning Man and then try to drop it off. But now I'm connecting through LA. So I'm sorry. 
You know they have FedEx in LA. I just say it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know. there are FedEx <laughs> drop off points in LA, and it would only take a few hours to get it up here. Just say it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I'll but think about cool. it. Cool. <laughs> All right, let's switch gears. Let's switch gears. You, my friend, are always on the bleeding edge of technology. You know, you're always. You, and we did an interview a couple of years ago. I think you you brought it to a head where you said you you are not afraid to try new technologies that come in and you're not afraid of failure so you know there's a the you know, pinterest shows up trey has his account there twitter shows up trey's on there g plus you're on there you're in there with both feet building stuff around g plus and now there's this new technology called plotograph and i know those guys i've spoken to them and the technology borders on let's call it uh alchemy <laughs> or, or some kind of magic in there so describe describe what photographs are and why and why you think it's important right well i was the first time i saw it i was shocked right um i met troy plota in vegas mm -hmm. photoshop world and he he pulled this thing up on a on an ipad and it was one of my pictures he goes look at this i was like yeah I go, that's one of my pictures. He goes, keep looking at it. And then it started to move and the water was flowing and the clouds were going and it was in some sort of a loop, but you couldn't, you couldn't even see the loop. You couldn't tell where the transition was. And it was, it was mesmerizing. And I'm pretty, I like to think I'm pretty good at figuring stuff out. I'm very sensitive and very analytical mind, but I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on with this photo, but I loved it. Immediately I loved it. And I've been thinking about this sort of thing for years because I'm, I'm actually fascinated with the way memory works. Yeah. And, you know, our memory is not JPEGs. We don't store JPEGs in our brain like, you know, on your iPhone. But you remember moments and there's movement and there's time. And, you know, the mind is sort of a slippery thing. And there's something very evocative about these photos. When I see them and they're moving and they're alive, it's something very, very nice. And it's, um, I can't quite put my finger on it. But two things I know. One, they are really fun to make and quite easy to make. And uh, number two, that the effect that they have on people is just amazing. People love looking at these things. Yeah, yeah, and I, I was telling Troy that it is, what's the word I use? You used mesmerizing, I use the word hypnotic. Cause mm -hmm. you look at them and you can't stop looking at them because it is a still photograph. So it's kind of, I wanna say it's the evolution of the cinemagraph, but it's not, the, it's, it's more of a, you know, common ancestor branch of of the cinemagraph because these 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 are still photos, which which allows photographers to go back into their collections and mine for something that would make sense to add animation to later. And you can go in and add the animation, like your like some of your Burning Man shots or or some of the shots that I'm showing here on the screen. So how do like when you when you put these together, how does it work? Like what's the what's the mechanics right. of putting one together? Well, that is the big um, confusing thing. <clears throat> People see this and they think it's uh, a cinemagraph, which requires you to go out and get um, new footage. You basically take a video of something, right? And then you carve out the part that you don't want to move. And the other thing loops, but usually quite sloppily, right? This, you make an animation out of a single JPEG, any single JPEG. And people probably have thousands of these back in their back catalog. Um, and it's a very simple program, right? Uh, it's all yep. on the web, uh, so it's not like Mac or PC specifics on the web. And you upload your picture, and then you kind of use a masking tool, the part that you want to stay still. And then you do little animation points, and you drag them in different directions. And it will slowly animate that background and have it fade out, loop, and repeat. It's, um, it's super fun, man. I've, I've probably made 200 of them now. <laughs> um, and, you know, I go back through my back catalog because it, it works great, like with things like clouds or hair or water or grasses, um, anything that's flowing, anything organic looks really, really nice with it. And I'll yeah. tell you what, though, it is, it is quite controversial. Uh-oh. Um, you know, I'm, I'm no, I'm no uh, newbie to getting hate right on the internet at all um, yeah well you mean that hdr stuff that you started <laughs> right with? Yeah. you know i mean now there's less hate it's, it's slowly wearing into people's brains right yeah but right. if you remember a lot of traditional photographers just hated hdr because it was manipulation of the image right and yeah. you're not supposed to do that right it's not a pure yeah. 
photograph anymore. Who knows what it is? But, and I see the same thing happening with this. So like a photograph is not supposed to move. It's supposed to be a moment in time. Well, who says it's not supposed to move, right? right. This is just an arbitrary right. rule. It's just kind of been the way the tech has been all the time. Are you saying like the real world isn't supposed to move, right? Like photo, it's, it's ridiculous. The real world moves. <laughs> and are we not capturing as artists and creatives? Are we not capturing the real world? Now, it doesn't mean that I make all of my photos photographs now. That's ridiculous. I don't make all of my photos HDR. I just do what I feel like the scene creatively needs. Um, and if it's interesting to me, uh, maybe it'll be interesting to other people, too. Yeah, I think you hit it right on the head. It's the it's the idea of telling the story. Right. So if the story is better told through motion or better, better told as a still or better told as black and white or as video or with some audio in there, we have all those tools now to do that. So who's to say what's right and what's wrong? I would argue the reverse, that it's wrong to try to tell and force fit a story into a single motionless frame if it's better told with motion or some other kind of multimedia. Right. Because we you can do it now. It's not like, OK, well, you know, back in the 50s when we just started with photography, like everything must be a still photograph. So that's all we have to work with. So let's do it with that and, and put our size 13 shoe into a, you know, our, our size 13 foot into an 11 inch shoe. We don't have to do that anymore. We can do whatever it takes to tell the story. And I think the people that rail against that are, you know. I think they're missing the point because on the one hand, if you're doing journalism and we've talked about this on this week in photo before, if you're doing straight journalism where you're trying to represent the scene as it was and it's news and it's impacting a segment of the population, your photo is trying to communicate something that happened. Then, yeah, you don't mess with it. That's, you know, the shot is the shot. But if you're an artist by definition, <laughs> by definition, you're creating art, which is not necessarily reality. It's something that's in your head that you're interpreting on the screen or on the canvas or in, in music or whatever. Right. So right. I think, yeah, yeah, the argument is un untenable. So, so, OK, so you're you're heading to uh, you're heading to Burning Man. So are you going to create some some photographs over at Burning Man? Probably. Um, although you need an internet connection to create photograph, and that's, that's hard to get. Um, basically, yeah. I'll do the same thing I always do. I run around and I get stills, okay? And then later, I'll put on my creative hat, and usually what I'll do, actually, is I'll use something like Aurora HDR to, mm -hmm. um, to turn that into a, uh, an HDR photo. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, if, it, if the situation calls for it, I will also make a photograph. Like, I'll have that's two crazy. versions of it, right? I'll have a still... And then I'll have a photograph and I can share them however I want to. Yeah, and that's the other piece of this. So the, the, the other, the other uh, reason why these kinds of photographs can be successful is we now have a medium that we can share them on. Like if you rewind back again to the 50s, it was all print, right? You can't, right. there was no other way to show these things. But now we're surrounded by screens. Like just sitting here, there are what, three, there's four, five screens around me <laughs> that, right. I, that I could theoretically display a, a photograph. Yeah. When when you're creating one of these, like when you're creating one of your HDR works and you make the decision to make it a photograph, what's your thought of where you're going to share it? Are you thinking, mm -hmm. yeah, since I'm making it a photograph, it's only going to be, it's only going to go on Facebook or YouTube right. or whatever? Well, I'll give you a, a link. I made a special portfolio um, of my photographs. And on there, I also have some tips and tricks and tutorials. And getting them up onto social media is not the easiest thing in the world. It's different in each one. Yeah. So after you finish the photograph, you can export it as a GIF, like a looping GIF file. Or you can export it as an MP4. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have it. The, the final export is actually, it's only like two and a half seconds or three seconds. And then it loops. And, but you can export it so it loops 20 times so it becomes a, a one-minute MP4, right? So anyway, you take the movie file and you put that on Instagram and that, you know, auto plays on Instagram, which is very cool. Then you take the GIF and you can't download, if you want to go on Facebook, you can't upload the GIF natively to Facebook. You have to go get an account on Giphy, upload it there, and then you get a link and you share the link and then it will auto play on there. You can upload the GIF directly to Twitter and to Google Plus, um, and to Pinterest. Um, so cool. anyway, I have all these tips on there. It's, it's different in every, in every scenario. And let, let me hit on something that just kind of cropped up in the back of my mind. We're talking about photograph sure. and mediums in the 50s. Well, um, 
one thing I notice, and I notice this with HDR, I remember, is that I've, most of my audience is non-photographers, right? And I think that's actually a pretty good goal for, for photographers. You know, we spend so much time just hanging out with other photographers, right? And that's like what's mostly in our social circles. And uh, people spend way too much time trying to impress other photographers. And you're going to get like a lot of like strange feedback. You always get weird feedback from photographers because all photographers are dealing with their own baggage, right? I deal with my own baggage, right? So when, I, when I'm looking at other people's stuff, I look at it through my own, you know, confused lens. But just like in HDR, the general public loves HDR photos. They don't know what's going on. They don't ask questions. They just think they look pretty. And I've noticed the same thing with photographs is that the general public thinks they're wild and interesting and cool and they wonder how it's done, but they also, they don't really get into the, the technical stuff like we get into. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's the, that's the crux of it. Once it's the gift of knowledge, <clears throat> the gift of knowledge, right? So when you're inside of this community, you tend to only see and only, only interact with other people in the community. Like for example, if you look on, uh, I don't know any look in your Twitter feed, right? The people that you're following in your Twitter feed are probably other people that are like you or of like mind, which means you're only going to see news that they think of, which is photography and all this kind of stuff. Right. So you're, you're insular in that respect. But if you look outside of that, the world is big. I mean, there's people that, that like swimming, go-karts, rock climbing. There's all kinds of people out there that can appreciate your art. And we, like you said, it's incestuous where we only show our goodies to people that are like us. right? Yeah. And we only, we have conversations with people that are just like us, which keeps us kind of, you know, with blinders on like a horse. So yeah, yeah that's for sure. I don't know. So on the Plotograph thing, so I'm um, looking at their page here, pre-launch special, 50 bucks off. It's $299 for this. Is that, so how does that work? It's, you get a, it's a subscription or is it a yes. one-time fee or how, what's the, what's the business model there? Well, they built this for pros. Okay. Um, and it's, it's a subscription per year, uh, 299 a year. And, uh, they also have enterprise pricing. Um, and they have huge clients like Pepsi and, you know, car companies and things like this. Yeah. Um, they even have these huge billboards that are up in Vegas, you know, these huge moving billboards are, they're really pretty. So they're definitely targeting the pro market. And these are people that of course have clients. Like for example, um, I've shown this to some wedding photographer friends and they've gotten it. And, you know, you can imagine what it could do to a really cool wedding photo and how shareable it is, how much a bride would love to see, you know, waves crashing in the background or her dress flying in the wind. And it sits the, up there on the front of their portfolio. They're very proud of it. You know, they can upsell their clients. So, you know, you, the idea, of course, is that you, you resell this to your clients and they will pay like much more than they normally would for a photo. And you get your money back in almost no time. And you're doing something extremely unique because it is expensive. There's a bit of a barrier to entry. So not everyone's going to have it. Yeah, which is good, which is good. So the uh, so the last question on this, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning, the comparison between the plotograph and a cinemagraph. Is it is it technically a cinemagraph and in, or is this an evolution in your mind? Does it replace the cinemagraph or is it an and versus an or? I don't know, it kind of gets down to a matter of semantics at a point. Um, a cinemagraph to me refers not just to the final product, but to the process of its creation. Because the way you create a cinemagraph, and you know, they were kind of the first in there, right? They've been doing it for a few years, is you have to go out and record something with your DSLR or with your iPhone, for example. So you record like 20 seconds. And then, so now you have a video. The next step in the process then is to pick like which five seconds you want to repeat. And then you carve out the part you don't want to move. So that whole, th that three-step process is to me the creation and a final result of a cinemagraph. This to me is just different because you start with a JPEG. You start yeah. with an existing JPEG that you already have. And um, so to me, it's the process and the final result. Yeah, yeah. And there we are. And I, I, I was talking to Troy and, and I, I, yeah, I, much like you, was surprised at what it could do. And but I was yeah. like teetering on the edge of saying this is the next. It's an evolution of photography. You know, it yeah. is. I think it. It's, I don't think it's an evolution of photography. It's just a really, really cool new tool that we have to tell stories, right? So it's just right. something else that, that we would, can use. 
I would not also, I would agree, I would not call this the evolution of photography because that would indicate that everything is going in this direction. This is just another beautiful creative shard that's coming off of this digital world that we're all immersed in. By the way, you got to get Troy Plota on this and tell me next time you talk to him if he does not have the exact same voice as Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> he totally does. Just he totally to does. He totally <laughs> does. All right. I, I thought he's more of a family guy kind of voice. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I know you got to run, but I want to ask you to, I want to dive into the Arcanum and get a touch base on where, where that is. That's another one of your Midas touch, <laughs> touch yeah. projects. Kind of, you just had an epiphany. I, I feel like I want to revolutionize education, online education. Maybe we'll create something and do more of an apprentice kind of Padawan kind of model to it. And then you came up with the, with the, with the Arcanum. How's it going? Has it been everything that you thought it would be or, or other? Oh, no, it's been, it's definitely been a challenge. I mean, you don't, it's hard to reinvent uh, education. And I'm not being, I'm saying that like it's this great thing, but it is completely different in that yeah. it's uh, very personal. Uh, apprentices come in and they say like what kind of photography they want to learn. And then a master picks them out. And then that master becomes, they become a pair, a lot of pair bonding, right? And then they level up and they do challenges and they have critiques every five levels. So it's very personal. Everyone has their own personal El, El Guapos they got to get through. Uh, so to build this kind of a network was very difficult, right? Because basically, this is Uber for brains, right? If you think about it, because your brain wants to go somewhere, right? And you, you, you kind of tell our cloud, our Uber cloud, where your brain wants to go. And then there's a brain that knows how to take it there. So that brain will come pick you up. The only difference is, is that you never get out of that Uber driver's car. He will always be your driver. <laughs> You can switch to a different master at some point if you want to learn something different. So we had to build this network that allows these brains to connect autonomously, uh, which was a tremendously, my background is computer science and math, and I used to do coding and software development. So it's been a really fun uh, kind of uh, procedure from that level. Anyway, the I guess our hot news now is that we are finally profitable. Um, not that profitable, <laughs> But we finally went over the hump, uh, which is good news. We figured some stuff out after we made some mistakes. We figured some stuff out. And now we're going out and we're going to formally raise uh, $1.5 million uh, to really put some fuel on the fire. We just we literally just finished our little investor deck last week. Uh, so we're going to run around to some friends and see who's interested. Um, we may even add music next. We've been talking to the guy that used to run um, Sony Music. Um, and they go, this is exactly what the music production world needs because, uh, you know, Master and Apprentice is great for any creative art, really. So it's, uh, it. we really think we're onto something. Can I, can I make a request for the next yeah. genre after music that you tackle? Yes. Cooking. Cooking. I would love I to would do like cooking, cooking too. Yeah. Can you imagine? Because it's, it's a very video centric thing and you're cooking with your fellow apprentices and your masters there to answer questions and doing oh, critiques. I would, I, I, yeah, count me in. I'd be told that's my latest, my latest non podcasting photography marketing passion is learning how to not go to McDonald's all the time. Right. <laughs> so that's a good point. That's good. Yes. Hey, so let, let me let me end it with this one final idea. We in the beginning yeah. we were talking about fearlessness and all this stuff and making mistakes. I want to I want to riff on that for just a second because I reflect on that a lot, and it's not just being fearless. Um, but there is another core behind that that's not immediately obvious. And I think the biggest creative gift that you can give to yourself is the complete dissolution of the ego. Do not take yourself seriously at all. You're just a vessel through which the world flows, right? Don't hang on to anything. Um, just let it go through you. Don't let things bother you. It doesn't matter, right? You're here just to create and to share and let go of yourself, all right? And once you do this, once you let stop these kind of blockages in your system, like things that bother you, you know, things that just get to you, well, that's an energy blockage because you're taking yourself a little too seriously or something's causing you some pain. And again, this isn't obvious, but once you unblock all that, your energy flow just goes through the roof and you become extremely creative and have people say, well, how do you have so much energy? Uh, because I do all these things. It's because I have no blockages. And which the core of it is not obvious. It requires zero ego. 
And that takes a while to happen, right? Um, I'll recommend uh, uh, two books. Um, one is The Untethered Soul by mm -hmm. Michael Singer. Great book. And then the other one is um, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. So uh, if any of this stuff I'm saying sounds interesting or you're like, maybe there's some truth to that, you decide for yourself. Read those books. You're a smart person. Uh, but I think it's, it is honestly the best creative gift that you can give to yourself is to just start toying with this path. I love it. Uh, that's the perfect, the perfect note to end this interview on. Trey Ratcliffe, have break a leg, have an awesome time in Burning Man, make lots of photographs out there running around with your, I'm assuming you're still shooting Sony in your camera bag, in your, your, your peak design camera bag. And uh, yeah, are, are you? You're still shooting I Sony, right? Well, okay, I am shooting Sony. That's my main system. That's the thing that I love. Um, yeah. Oh, man, I'm really in between worlds of cameras now. The one uh -oh. I, I really, I've been shooting with Hasselblad a lot, the Hasselblad Media oh. Format. Digital. Oh, I love. Not the not the X1D. Please tell me you don't have an X1D. I don't. But I think that oh. is going to be the one that I really, really get excited about. There's not enough lenses for it yet, but that one, I'm super excited about that one. And uh, but anyway, the one that I'm really going to be shooting mostly with is the Fuji X Pro Two. What? Um, <laughs> because oh, you're a Fuji man, right? No, no, I'm Lumix. I shoot Panasonic. Oh, that's right. Well, so I, I, Fuji was nice and they just sent me this one to play with. And so it's, it's scary to take your favorite camera out there, which still honestly is really the Sony because of the sandstorms and the dirt and everything. It can really, it can tear apart your camera. By the way, mm -hmm. I just wrote an article about how to take care of your camera at Burning Man. If anyone wants to read it, I'll send you a mm -hmm. link. Um, so mostly please. while I'm running around on my bike and I'll mostly be shooting with that Fuji. Um, because d daytime shots, um, those lenses are great. Um, I think I'll pretty much get the same shot during the daytime with that, with that Fuji system. I love that. See, that's one of the things I love about you, Trey. Since I've known you, Nikon, you started with Nikon. When we met, you were shooting Nikon. Yeah. Then you wrote that post slamming Sony. And then yeah. Sony fixed most of the things that you were slamming them on. And you jumped over and, and jumped over to the A7 world. You're yeah. shooting that. And now you're experimenting with Fuji. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's the way you got to be, right? Yeah. Look, none of these companies pay me or anything. It's, uh, I, I just do stuff that I think is cool. Uh, sometimes there is a commercial relationship, you know, like with, uh, with our bags and peak design, but not always, you know, I yeah. just, I just like to do awesome stuff. And if there's a business relationship, cool. If not cool. I love it. I love yeah. it. I remember, uh, I'll leave you with this note. I was down, I was on this press junket with Sony. Uh, I think it was before the A7 launch. It was around the A7 launch. They came out with the A7, the A7R, right? You mm -hmm. remember that? Yeah. And I remember talking to Sony people and uh, like your name came up and they're like, you know, Trey Radcliffe? Oh my God. <laughs> like, he's that guy. He wrote that article. I'm like, but you're Sony. You're yeah. like, he's that's Trey. He's a human. Yeah. You are a giant monolithic <laughs> Japanese corporation. What can yeah. he possibly do to you? Clearly a lot. So, so congratulations, uh, David and Goliath. <laughs> They're scared. They know I can't be bought and I speak the truth. Life's too yeah. short. You know? Yeah, that's right. Can't be bought. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, where, where should people go to check this stuff out? So we talked about the bag, plotographs, and the Arcanum. You said you mentioned a tutorial that you have out on the plotographs. Where is all this stuff at that we, people can go to? Um, the best place, well, we'll link under the YouTube video and everywhere in the show notes. Yep. Um, uh, the main website is still uh, stuckincustoms.com. Okay. Uh, that's the best place to go find out about the bags or anything. Uh, also, you can go right to the Kickstarter page. Um, and if you want, if you're really interested in photographs, I have a dedicated photograph portfolio at, a, I don't quite have a good URL for it yet. I got to think of a good name. So for right now, it's at the confusing tray-ratcliffe.squarespace.com. And that's all photographs, that's, tutorials, tips, samples, et cetera. That's easy to get to. And you'll, you'll send me all those links and we'll put them in the, the description for this YouTube video and in the blog post. Yes, sir. Perfect. And I'll, I'll leave you with this, Trey. And I said this before we started recording. You, sir, are the Jay-Z of photography. <laughs> you, are, <laughs> you are the Midas touch. You know, Jay-Z has his finger from a business perspective. He's like... Yeah. 
you know, whatever business he ties his name to instantly makes several million dollars. Trey Radcliffe, that's you for photography. So congratulations, man. I, pre- I appreciate <laughs> wow. you coming on and appreciate the inspiration of the stuff that you do. It's something to aspire to, I swear. Well, thank you, Fred. That's nice. I always like talking to you. We got to hang out in real life more. You can Absolutely. get it here in New Zealand. Come on. Yeah, I know you, you. Hey, you have another another workshop coming up in New Zealand. I think uh, I think it may be time for me to come down again. We do. We have one in a few months. You know, it's opposite world down here. So when it's fall there, it's spring here, and it's beautiful. You know, the glaciers start to melt, and yeah. oh my god, it's gorgeous. Last time, last time I was there, I remember we uh, we flew on a helicopter and landed on a glacier, probably where no human feet had been before right yeah <laughs> which was i still have some of the rocks i know i shouldn't have taken them but i still have a few little pebbles that i got off of that glacier right on the edge you know so That's yeah good. yeah we got a lot of rocks so you can take as many as you want they're all everywhere <laughs> <laughs> it's not like i'm gonna take them off earth so they're still here right cool all right trey thanks a lot man i appreciate the time all right thanks bro yep take care